today the topic I've been avoiding for years. How can you tell if you have diabetes? Looking for early signs? So, are there early signs or symptoms for diabetes? The first thing we're gonna say is most people don't experience warning signs until they get problems from long-term damage. Some people do experience some signs. Most early symptoms are due to higher than normal levels of glucose or higher than normal levels of insulin, both of which have been documented clearly to cause cardiovascular inflammation, plaque, heart attack, stroke, dementia, kidney disease, eye disease, erectile dysfunction, you name it. With type 1 diabetes, the symptoms usually happen quickly. I mean, usually it's a another immune system issue where your body takes friendly fire. With type 2 diabetes, your body's taking friendly fire from your immune system when it's attacking the plaque that's already in your arteries from previous cardiovascular inflammation. With type 1 diabetes, it's a different issue. It's also taking friendly fire from your immune system, but it's your pancreas, the beta cells, the islets of Langerhein for the biology geeks, the things that create insulin. They get attacked because there's a cross reactivity. Won't go any deeper than that. We'll move on to early signs, early skin signs of diabetes. One of the things we don't have on here is skin tags. You've seen them. Skin tags create a lot of income for a lot of primary care docs. The patients come in, they take off the skin tag, and the patient thinks they're fine. What causes those skin tags? For the most part, some combination of high blood sugar and IGF, usually IGF-1. What is IGF and why would that cause this? IGF stands for insulin-like growth factor. So insulin in and of itself stimulates growth of tissues, growth of fat tissues, growth of skin tissues, skin tags. And as you see here, it can also cause darkening of the skin, especially in folds, like in your neck where you have folds. The spots usually begin as a darkening or thickening of the skin. They can progress to itching in larger patches. Most commonly appear in skin folds, neck, armpits. They can also be seen on palms soles of the feet, behind the knees, and on the elbows. So as you see, you know, you think, well, I'll get a tan. No, these things occur in places where you don't usually get a tan. You usually don't have a whole lot of melanin in a lot of these places too, like the palm. In fact, I know that I have a freckle right there on the palm of my hand. Now, is that acanthosis nigricans or nigrans? I don't know. We do know that I have significant prediabetes because I watch this stuff like a hawk for myself, I can I can technically say I have full-blown diabetes. If I were watching myself the way most patients get watched by their primary care doc, we would be saying Ford's got absolutely no problem with prediabetes, let alone diabetes. But there was one time when my daughter graduated, we went out to a meal. It was a celebratory meal. I had too many carbs and other things, some alcohol, some fats. And after the second dessert, I know I deserved it, but after the second dessert, I had a freestyle Libre on and the number actually went up to 205. So we could technically say I meet the official criteria of having full-blown diabetes. You could also argue, well, the freestyle Libre is not that good. I'm not going to get in any of those debates. Let's get back to the script. If you have acanthosis nigricans, it's likely because you have too much insulin in your bloodstream. When you eat, your body converts carbohydrates into sugar molecules like glucose. The hormone insulin must allow glucose to enter cells so that the cells can use glucose for energy. That's where we're going. The inability to get that glucose into the cells so the cells stay hungry and send out that message and glucose glucose stays high in your blood. With your glucose staying high in your blood, there's a receptor in your brain, like a thermostat, a heat thermostat in your house. As your blood sugar goes up, that receptor says, blood sugar's too high, let's release some insulin. So you get a combination of high insulin and high glucose. People with diabetes have developed insulin resistance. Although insulin is being produced, the body's unable to use it. 
This creates a buildup of glucose in the bloodstream, which can result in high levels of both glucose and insulin. Excess insulin can cause skin cells to reproduce more rapidly. And as I said, as you see on the bottom, IGF, which is insulin-like growth factor, both of those things, sometimes a little bit of confusion about which is one and which is the other. They're like twin cousins or twin brothers, and both of them have very similar types of activities. Excess insulin causes skin cells to reproduce more rapidly and in some people new cells have more melanin so that's where you start to get these freckles and these acanthosis on places like palms where you don't normally get a tan so not every dark skin patch is caused by diabetes. For example, we don't know that mine is, but we don't know that it is. Although acanthosis nigricans is most commonly found in diabetic patients, it can be linked to other conditions as well. Genetic disorders, medications, malignancy, autoimmune disease, and obviously with anything. The other thing about this channel is getting to know this stuff early because the earlier you discover something, the quicker you can treat it. So what are some long-term symptoms? Cravings for sweets and salty foods, darkening of skin, even in the groin, armpits, or behind the neck, as we discussed just over the past few slides. Increased hunger or thirst. Now, you can get this in two different ways. You can get thirst when you get what's called diabetic ketoacidosis. You know, many of us look for ketosis to burn fat. Diabetic ketoacidosis is somewhat similar, but it's got some unique and very dangerous properties. You get acidotic. Diabetics get to where they can't burn any carbs at all. They're burning nothing but fats, and that's going on and on and on without metabolic control. We're in ketosis anytime we're burning fat and our metabolism is maintaining control. Metabolic control can go into acidosis and it can kill them. When a diabetic is getting thirsty, that's what you need to be worried about. Now, we also mentioned increased hunger. Remember, increased hunger can often come from the fact that glucose is not in our cells. It's just hanging around in our blood because we can't get it into our cells. There's another place and perhaps more common situation, and that is we're on that carb train. So so we're eating carbs, blood sugar goes up 150, 160, 180. Then we finally burn those carbs out and we start bottoming out. Our blood sugar comes back down. Even if it only comes back down to 100, it's that thermostat thing. If you're used to having a blood sugar just routinely cranking along at 160, 180, and then you drop to 100, you get hungry. And we're gonna talk about that one in just a minute. That leads to obesity that leads to getting fat and that may be the most common symptom other than no symptom but we'll talk about that again in a minute you get fatigue with this you get frequent or increased urination especially when you're getting frequent thirst and you can get tingling cessation or even neuropathy and one of the things if you start going into the science we've shown it on some other presentations where you can actually get nerve damage before you get the diagnosis of full-blown diabetes it happens all the time you get yeast infection both men and women with diabetes can get these. For example, peeing out sugar. We've got more sugar in our bloodstream than we need to have. We may have more sugar in our mouth, our saliva, and yeast feeds on glucose. So having plenty of it around makes yeast thrive. Infections can grow in any warm, moist fold of the skin, including between the fingers and toes, under breasts, in or around our groin and sex organs. Slow healing of sores and cuts. Now, over time, high blood sugar can cause damage that makes it hard for your body to heal. In fact, what's the number one cause of amputations these days in most places? Diabetes. Pain or numbness in your feet or legs. Again, we talked about neurology just a minute ago and damage to nerves. You see, the nerves are actually supplied by blood supply as well, but there are several things that can happen to nerves. And we'll talk about those at some point in another presentation. When your blood sugar is routinely high, the nerve sheath is rigid and in people with diabetes and prediabetes that nerve sheath is even more rigid than usual so you've got increased volume in a place that doesn't have room to expand increased rigidity and you also get a couple of other things so again that's why you can often see nerve damage as one of the first things that happens with diabetes now i meant this is my favorite one and the reason it's my favorite one is because so many of us have that. In fact, there's a term for it. It's called that middle-aged bulge, that spare tire, that 
Dunlop's disease, where your belly Dunlopped over your belt. There's a whole bunch of humorous and other types of references to gaining body fat, especially gaining body fat around the middle, but just gaining body fat. There's one author who's written not only one book, Gary Taubes, and it's been a bestseller, Why We Get Fat and What to Do About It. He's written more than one book about that same topic, Good Calories, Bad Calories. It's sort of like Why We Get Fat, the prequel or the sequel, I don't remember. But it's like, if you like Why We Get Fat and What to Do About It, and you want to read 700 more pages of that content, get the book, Good Calories, Bad Calories. So yes, weight gain causes diabetes, but diabetes and prediabetes can also cause weight gain. Why does that happen? Well, we talk about statins having multiple different effects. Yes, they decrease LDL, but the big thing is maybe it's because they decrease cardiovascular inflammation. There's been a lot of that talk about that on the channel recently. Wait a minute, why did I go down that bunny hole? Here's why I went down that bunny hole. Insulin has the same thing. Statins have multiple impacts. Vitamin K has multiple Im impacts. Insulin has multiple impacts as well. You see insulin, and insulin is well known to help sugar go from the blood into the cells, but it does something else as well. It stops fat burning. Now, how could you remember that? Well, think about it in terms of logic and what we would call physiology or the way the body works. If insulin is all about getting the blood sugar down because high blood sugar burns our arteries, burns the proteins in our arteries, you know, that's what hemoglobin A1C is. It's a denatured hemoglobin, a burnt hemoglobin, and it's burnt because the glucose molecule has bonded permanently to hemoglobin. So insulin appears to be focused on getting that blood sugar down in not one, but two ways. One way is to open up that insulin receptor. And again, we talk about resistance of that insulin receptor it getting rusty and not working so well. But a topic I just brought up is insulin also slows down fat burning. So guess what? If your insulin receptors start getting resistant where they don't work so well, they don't respond to insulin, then your blood sugar just starts remaining high. And guess what? If your blood sugar remains high, then your body's going to be saying, we need more and more insulin. So you tend to have both high blood sugar and high insulin. And guess what happens to your ability to burn fat? Because of that high insulin level, you can't burn the fat that well. So guess what? We start getting fat. I just saved you about what? depending on how fast you read. Maybe I just saved you about six or eight hours worth of reading 700 pages of good calories, bad calories, or why we get fat. We get fat because of the endocrine problems. If you want more of a doctor's perspective on it, there are a couple of other books. Robert Ludwig. Ludwig runs a, an obesity program at UC San Diego. Well, maybe UC San Francisco. Anyhow, on the West Coast. But there's a doc on the East Coast who does even more research in this area and has another book. Ludwig's book is called, there's several of them. It's about blood sugar. David Ludwig is over at Harvard on the East Coast. He also is a endocrinologist. He also runs a, an obesity program. And he's also written about this same thing that Gary Taubes, Robert Lustig, David Ludwig all have written on the same thing. The hormonal theory of weight loss or the hormonal mechanism of weight loss where we get fat because our insulin levels are high. Our insulin levels are high because we're insulin resistant and our blood sugar is therefore high. So I went around four or five repetitions of the same thing. Hope you got it and I'll leave it alone now. Why wait for a disease and hope for a cure? I used to be an ER doc. My name is Ford Brewer. I quit ER after a few years because it was just so frustrating. Most of the things bringing people into the ER are things that should have been prevented, including heart attack, stroke, number one cause of death, number one cause of permanent disability. People think that you're just gonna have those and that they're not predictable. Both of those are wrong. You, they are predictable and you don't have to have them. Usually it's lifestyle. Lifestyle is more important than supplements and even prescription drugs and even stents and surgery. But the current times are tough, major financial impact with the lockdowns that most states have been going through. We've been working on a way to make this much more affordable with a subscription process. And that's exactly what we're announcing today. We've got two levels. One is the silver membership, where you get access to our courses, 
a private webinar each month and access to our supplement store and supplement recommendations and prescription. Or I would suggest even more so the gold membership. You can get a script for a Freestyle Libre and find out what your blood sugar metabolism is doing on a daily basis. And you can get a lab order for inflammation, OGTT, and insulin survey. You can also get a 30-minute one-on-one with me. So I'm looking forward to seeing you. Cost is no longer an excuse. So if you're interested, go to go.prevmedheartrest.com slash prevmed dash subscription or call us at 859-721-1414, 859-721-1414 or email us at myhealth at prevmedheartrest.com. Looking forward to seeing you. Thank you.